welcome to a new vlog in this video i'm going to explain why you should get such a monitor for your electronics workbench this one is an excellent choice as i will show next but i'm mostly referring to the form factor which is great for many things in the electronics lab so it can just as well be a different model with different specs if you choose so so full disclosure, this particular unit was sent in for free for the purpose of this review by Banggood.com. So should you decide to order one at the time of publishing this video, they have this on sale for a great price. They have it in stock in their EU warehouse. So you could get it delivered in a matter of days via local courier service. Also Banggood offered a discount code for my viewers, which you will find in the description of the video. Using the code will bring the cost down a few more dollars, but keep in mind that discount codes typically cannot be accumulated with existing promotions. A link for this product will be in the description of the video. Now continuing with the review, this is how the unit is delivered. It's in a box similar to how you would get a big tablet or laptop. Inside you get the monitor with its uh, PU leather case, you get a thick USB Type-C cable, a USB type -A, type a to USB Type-C cable, a mini HDMI to regular HDMI cable, as well as a generic 5 volt 3 amp USB power adapter. The model number is T16A and it's likely you may find this under different branding. This one in particular doesn't have any like obvious branding. The size of the screen is 15 inches with a 1920 by 1080p resolution. Uh, it's, it has an 178 degrees viewing angle. It's uh, 60 hertz refresh rate, 500 candela brightness rating, 16 by 9 ratio, IPS panel with a glossy surface with no touch screen. I would have loved to have a matte screen at the expense of losing some contrast and maybe some brightness, but it's certainly not a showstopper. In terms of connectivity, you get two USB Type-C ports, and although one of them is marked power, the other one, uh, it says super speed, I can use either one of these to both power and supply video slash audio data to the monitor uh, via a single USB Type-C cable. But just as a safety precaution, maybe it's best to stick to the markings on the ports and when using uh, a separate cable for power, maybe that should be plugged into the port that says power. You also get this mini HDMI port, which can also be used for video input from HDMI out devices like any game console, um, any a single board computer, some stuff like that. And you also get a 3.5 millimeter headphone port. Next to the HDMI, there is also a micro USB port, which there is no mention of in the user manual or any of the online listings that I could find for this product. But it felt like it must be for OTG-like purposes. And by using one of these micro USB to type A adapters, which is not included with the monitor, I was able to plug in a flash drive which was immediately discovered on the host computer. So this micro USB port is just connected to an internal USB hub. The monitor also includes two speakers and not sure if you noticed it already but all of this comes in a super clean and slim package which weighs just 800 grams on its own uh, but uh, the case adds another 100 grams to a total of 900 grams. But it's a nice addition that they include the protection PU leather case that doubles as a monitor stand by folding it in the correct position. Before I continue with the review, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, who is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Volvox channel. Right now, they're running their fifth annual PCB design contest. So if you have some PCB designs that you'd like to submit, why not do it for a chance to win one of the juicy cash prizes? could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing, CNC machining and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website linked below. The monitor has a couple of switches on the side for navigating its on-screen display menu which feels quite nice and professional and I can say that about this monitor in general. The construction feels quite nice and high quality with no indication that might make me feel like this is a cheap product. The case of the monitor feels high quality the image on the display panel they used is actually better than the uh, display I have on my laptop, so I quite like all of that. Even the brightness of this monitor is higher than what I have on my Lenovo laptop. But why did I say in the opening of this video that you need to get yourself one of these monitors? Well, let me show you a few scenarios from my workflow where this monitor is going to make uh, my life easier. Scenario number one. 
I'm working remotely. I have a 14 inch Lenovo X1 carbon laptop with a full HD resolution. It's a great laptop, but doing schematic or PCB layout design on this 14 inch screen can be problematic. I've had numerous occasions where I was away from the office and it was a pain to do a few hours of work by constantly switching back and forward between schematic and PCB layout and maybe a, a PDF data sheet. Now I can just take this slim monitor with me in the same backpack and I can use it anywhere to extend the laptop monitor by connecting with a single USB Type-C cable and this will greatly improve my setup and my workflow when I'm working remotely. In this scenario, the laptop will be providing power to the monitor, but if you're worried about your laptop battery life, you can also power the monitor with a second cable from a, an external power bank. And of course, there are variations to this scenario with the way you power your laptop or if, if you'd like to use the HDMI input instead. Scenario number two, a Raspberry Pi type single board computer, uh, maybe something like a CADAS Veeam 4 single board computer, which I'm also going to review soon. It's as simple as connecting it via an, an HDMI cable and you immediately get a monitor running on your system for debugging or whatever tasks you might have. The way I used to do this is to crawl to the back of my desktop monitor, plug in a, a new HDMI to HDMI mini cable to connect to a Raspberry Pi, which sometimes was a problem because I also needed to use my desktop computer at the same time for some purposes. It's much more convenient to do it on something like this portable monitor. Scenario number three, this is something that I can't really showcase here because I don't have uh, a, uh, a USB Type-C smartphone but you can connect this to a smartphone that outputs video over USB Type-C port and extend its display, play movies, games, stuff like that on this monitor. And many modern smartphones and tablets offer this function and the manufacturer does provide the list of compatible devices, though I'm sure that in real life there are many more that would work with this. Scenario number four, use this as a workbench monitor and for this scenario I would say that it's not an ideal solution because the monitor does not have any mounting options on the back so you would either need to keep this at bench level like I'm showing here or maybe 3D print some custom mounting bracket that goes on the back but if it does the first three scenarios perfectly then you could consider this fourth one as a bonus and you could have this connected to a small desktop PC like an Intel Nuke for electronic workbench tasks or you could have it connected to an HDMI output microscope camera like I'm showcasing here. So this third scenario would be mostly like a general purpose HDMI monitor usage where you can just pull this out of a drawer or your backpack and you instantly have an HDMI monitor that you can use. The audio quality I would rate as very similar to the one out of the built-in speakers of my X1 laptop. Uh, but with the difference that they're back facing speakers. So because of that, the front facing down firing speakers on my uh, laptop uh, do sound a little bit better, but in a pinch, you could benefit from having these built-in speakers with a scenario like connecting to a Raspberry Pi uh, to get that audio feedback but you won't be getting high quality audio out of this. The image quality is superb. I'm not sure the exact part number of the panel that they use in this display, but it's definitely on par or better with the monitors that I have. It has very good colors, very good brightness, a bit on the warmer side on its standard profile, but I really like that and I tend to use warmer profiles on all of my monitor setups anyway. If you're not doing something very special like graphics design where you might require the absolute best accurate picture uh, representation, I don't think there's going to be any complaint with this mod monitor. It's certainly above average, quite possibly better than most uh, average laptops out there. The monitor does run at 5 volts, so if you're plugging this into a PD capable port, it's going to negotiate down to 5 volts. And I've measured the power usage, it's about 5.3 watts if you switch to full brightness, which is not bad at all, and about 3.7 watts with the brightness set to half, which is something I would normally use it at. Now, with 3.7 watts of power usage out of a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, like I'm showing here, you would be getting roughly 13.5 hours of usage. So with one of these uh, small power banks, you could be getting plenty of work hours on this setup. But if you use like a larger uh, 20 amp hour battery, you would be doubling this time, which is excellent in my, in my opinion. 
Not everything is perfect though and I have to mention a few things which I don't like about this uh, monitor. First, I would have preferred this to be a matte screen instead of glossy. It would have taken less fingerprints, it would have less reflections at the expense of losing a bit of contrast and brightness. But it is what it is, many screens are glossy and we still live with them just fine. Luckily, there is no touch screen so there shouldn't be too much fingerprint gathering on the screen if you're careful with it. The second thing that I do not like is that we don't have any uh, mounting options on the back, like we don't get any uh, screw holes to attach this to some, some kind of mount to use it in a bench type fixed setup. But I get how they designed this to be a portable monitor, so they thought that making it very slim, just 5 millimeters thick, is more important than you know having mounting holes. So it's still something to keep in mind if you plan to use this in a uh, fixed mounting option. And the third thing that I don't like is that this extra USB port is micro USB. It doesn't make sense to do that on such a modern product. It should have been USB type A or even better USB type C so that you can directly plug in stuff like external flash drives without needing an adapter. But to be honest these are all little things that could have improved the product. They're not at all deal breakers so I still think this is a very good and useful monitor to have either for general multimedia purpose or in an electronics lab. I think the price it sells for it's not bad either. You're certainly getting uh, something that is worth that much. So should you decide to order one, make sure to use the discount code provided in the description that will bring the cost down a little further and make it a sweet deal. That was all for today, I would really appreciate your feedback in the comments below so let me know what you think about this monitor and if there are other use cases where something like this can be useful. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you next time.